It is one thing to have access to biblical resources such as Bible dictionaries, commentaries, or even a concordance. It's a whole nother thing to actually know how to use them effectively. Today, we wanna do a quick tutorial on how to use a Bible concordance to level up your Bible study and personal devotion. Let's get it. Hey guys, I'm Reynaldo Ramos with Vine Media. Today, we wanna jump straight into our tutorial. We're gonna be looking at the new Strong's Expanded Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible. That is a mouthful. There are a lot of other concordances out there, but they all have uh, similar features in them. This is one of my favorites because of how exhaustive it is. It really covers a lot of ground. Um, if you're interested in this one in particular, I will put a link in the description. The one negative I would say is the English references in this particular uh, concordance is all related to the King, King James version of the Bible. And so that's the one uh, caveat. So if you look at, um, if you're researching a word grace or something, and if you read your modern translation, ESV, NIV, NLT, CSB, um, it might not have that same English word. And so that's the only thing um, to, to be mindful of with this one in particular, um, but I love all of the other features. And so let's jump in to this uh, this awesome resource. So um, the Strong's Expanded Exhaustive Concordance has four major um, sections in it. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the first three and we're going to go through them really quickly. I just want to touch on the last section that's in this book. They have a lot of supplemental things. They have a topical index that you could look at. Um, they have um, a small harmony of the Gospels. A harmony of the Gospels is looking at the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and looking at all the stories and narratives and seeing, and in, in a harmony, you can see uh, which ones match up in the different Gospels. The back of this also has the conversions of weights and monies. It also has uh, the parables of Jesus listed. It just has a lot of different resources, really great resources, pretty self-explanatory. So I'll let you um, explore that on your own. The bulk of this resource is found in three major sections. The first is the actual concordance, and then the second and third sections are dictionaries. The, the second section, which is the first dictionary, is a Hebrew and Aramaic dictionary. And then the third section is the Greek dictionary. Let's look at what this looks like. So as you can see, there's just a list of words. And so um, you would uh, try to find your word in here. Uh, I opened up and I'm on pray. I'm on a P, the P section. I'm on, I'm on pray. And so here's how you uh, would read the concordance. Um, right now, it has pray and then there's a number right next to it, 313. That number is how much the, how many times the word pray is in the English Bible. Again, the KJV version, um, but the word pray is in the English Bible 313 times. Then it has a list of every place that word is found. So all 313 times, there it is lined up for you in the order of the biblical books. Then um, it goes to the next word which is prayed and so this is specifically how the word is in the English language um, so the word prayed is in the English Bible 65 times and there is all the references there the word prayer is 114 times then you go to the next session section which is prayers and that is 24 times and again this is King James so it has prayest which is two times prayeth which is seven times and then praying which is 20 times and so that's a, a quick reference to tell you and show you how many um, times uh, the word is used in the English Bible the next part of this is like I said it lines up all of the uh, times that it is uh, referenced and it gives you the Bible reference and so you can go and so I, I can go to 
Um, if we look at prayer, um, I'm going to look here at Luke 19:46. My house is the house of prayer. Pretty popular verse. The Strong's number, if you look here, is 4335. So let's jump into the dictionary to explore this word a little bit further. A side note on the dictionaries, uh, there's two dictionaries, the Hebrew and Aramaic and the Greek, and it's really simple to use. If your reference is in the Old Testament, you will be using the Hebrew and Aramaic dictionary. And if your reference is in the New Testament, then you'll be using the Greek dictionary. Since our reference is in Luke, Luke is in the New Testament, we'll be looking at the Greek dictionary. So we find ourselves now in the Greek dictionary of the New Testament. And what you have to do is flip through and find the Strong's number that you're looking for. In our case, it was 4335, Strong's 4335. Here it is, found. Um, and then this breaks down uh, several things to give you some more insight on the word that you're studying. If we look here next to 4335, you'll see the Greek word um, and that is pronounced prosyokai, prosyokai, all right. Um, uh, my Greek is not the best, haven't uh, studied up on it too much, but that is what that Greek word is. Next to the Greek word, there is a number and it'll tell you how many times this particular Greek word is used in the Greek Bible. And so this word is used 37 times in the Greek Bible. Next to that number, it will have what's called a transliteration. And all that means is that, uh, you know, Koine Greek doesn't use the same letters um, or sounds as our English. Um, and so it just transliterates, it turns the Greek word into a uh, English word that we could be, that we could be, uh, it could just be recognized to us and so that's that next to that is the breakdown of the pronunciation how you say it pros yo kai um and then next to that if this comes from a root word it will be it will follow and so this says from four three three six and so if you want to get really deep you can pause there look for that number in our case, it's right below it, so it helps us out. Um, and you can see um, any information about the root word that this word comes from. Um, then it breaks down um, different meanings or possible meanings of this word. So there's prayer, and in parentheses it says worship, um, by implication, an oratory, in parentheses, chapel. Um, and then it says to pray earnestly then it has plus three, three, four, six. And that's one time in the Greek language that it means that. And all that means is that it's a compound word. And so if you want to get deeper, you would look up uh, three, three, four, six. And so that word plus our word here, four, three, three, five, together makes this compound word of to pray earnestly. And that's only found one time in the New Testament. And then another definition is simply prayer. Um, and then after that, it gives a, it has this paragraph here that really shows us uh, more information about this particular word. And so right here, um, it has that this word denotes prayer to God. And this is the most frequent term. So in the New Testament, when it's talking about prayer to God, this is one of the most common terms used. Um, then it has some biblical references, um, and then you could just read other biblical references, other information. Um, there's another interesting tidbit here that says this is a word of sacred character being limited to prayer to God. Um, another interesting thing here is that this refers to the element of devotion as you talk about prayer. To God and so there's some great information here to really use this effectively what you would want to do then is look at the word 
and look at all the cross references of that word. Uh, so you would want to look at 4335. You would want to look at 4336. You would want to look at all the other numbers that are uh, mentioned in these definitions and the compound uh, uses of the words. And then you can look at he the Hebrew side of it. And so if you're doing a Bible study on prayer or if you just want to learn about prayer or preaching and prayer is a point, you'd want to really search all of these definitions to get a broad and really deep sense of what the word prayer means or what the word to pray means in the biblical languages. And this really gives you some good depth into um, what the Bible is talking about. Another side note here as we uh, close this out is as you're studying this, if you're using this for a, um, a Bible study or a class or a preaching, I would suggest using this uh, as a way to inform yourself um, to then open up to the Holy Spirit to speak to you more about what the text is actually saying. Simply doing this and then plugging and playing a definition to make a point um, isn't always the best way to go when teaching or preaching the Bible. You want to um, be careful how you do that because you can um, you can start treading into some cautious waters with that. So you definitely want to um, learn about it, go into scripture, read the context, do a lot more with scripture before you start plugging and playing definitions. But this is a great way to use this resource. We have other videos and here at Vine Media, we love to make videos to help believers and resource believers um, in biblical resources. And so we have videos that we share about um, uh, ways to study the Bible, different resources we recommend, Bible translations, a bunch of different things. So we encourage you to check our other videos and our other playlist. Um, and if you find value in what we do, we would love for you to subscribe hit the like button, the notification bell, so you don't miss any of our videos. We post weekly, and so you can join the Vine Media family and go on this journey with us.